What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania is almost here. This is the movie that we've been saying for quite some time now that it needs to be a showstopper or a show beginner. It has to... It's a pivotal movie, Brian, and but I've had um, nothing but excitement for it uh, for a long time, actually. Uh, and, and it's almost here. Uh, and it seems uh, that um, the people involved with this film are very excited about it as well. Uh, one of the writers for um, Kang, um, for Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantum Mania says that Kang the Conqueror is a top tier A list Avengers villain. Brian, that says it, that's saying a lot. You know how we feel about these these claims. So the comments are from Jeff Loveness, who is right, who wrote Quantum Mania, and is writing Kang Dynasty, Avengers Kang Dynasty. So same writer. So he's tasked with sort of connecting connecting these dots. Look, we've talked about it. Uh, Marvel. Marvel needs a very specific kind of hit. By anyone else's definition, they've been cranking out hits. But they need a very specific kind of hit with Ant-Man 3. They need the kind of hit that is critically acclaimed with regard to Jonathan Majors in particular. And I think they need the kind of hit that gets people buzzing about the Avengers films to come. That those to me are the two, like as much as, you know, we had a discussion with Wakanda forever. We both liked the movie, both liked the attempts the movie made. But other than the very end and in, in sort of the revelation of, of T'Challa's son, a lot of that movie's greatness is kind of self-contained. It doesn't necessarily you know, we didn't love the Ironheart stuff, but that Ironheart's not heading in the direction of Secret Wars. I mean, even if she is in it, it, she's not critical to them. This movie is the one that has to get all of the different kind of parts of fandom pointed toward Marvel's back. Marvel's back on track. They've got this charismatic lead villain in Jonathan Majors Kang, and they've got this cool new MacGuffin forever crystal storyline that you just can't wait to see the next phase of or the next appearance of. I don't know. I mean, like I am moderately confident, but I'm not really confident they're going to pull that off. Um, and that's because of the past year plus we've been kind of let down more often than not when we build these projects up. Here's what has to happen, Brian. And it has the possibility of doing this. They certainly have a lot of confidence in Jonathan Majors. I think most of us do. Because he's a great actor. Um, and like you said in our previous podcast, this is the beginning of the of his dynasty. We're certainly not going to see Kang at his best. We're going to be seeing Kang with a plan to, I guess, do the conquering that he hasn't done. And we're going to see that. To me, Brian, that's exciting. Certainly, we're not going to see that throughout the film. We're going to see that perhaps at the end of it and what sets off uh, this journey. Uh, and I think it could bring us closer to towards the right track uh, in terms of excitement of what's to come, because that's what we've been lacking, Brian, because we haven't been excited about anything that much. Or we've been... I wouldn't say that we've been this we've been excited about multiverse of madness. We were even excited about Thor Love and Thunder, but they disappointed. 
because they suffer a lot of the same things in, uh, 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 in terms of why they didn't succeed in our view. Money-wise, they did a hell of a job. But in terms of perception, in terms of people wanting to go out and see Marvel films, it hasn't been that. And I think this is, at the end of this movie, Brian, I think we're going to get back that excitement or at least look forward to what's next next with um in the films and with this dynasty that we're going to see being built by Kang. I want to see what that's going to look like. Hopefully that can get us excited. This film has to hit Brian in order for the rest of it to even mean anything and people would be excited for. Yeah, and Jonathan Majors has a unique challenge because we know he's going to play this character multiple ways. So the presumption is the the presumption is the version of Kang you see in this film becomes the the arch villain of Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. That's the assumption. Yeah. This this variant. But we also know that we'll see other variants. We you know, one question I would have for you is I would suspect I don't know if you agree, but I would suspect that the variant of Kang who will appear in season two of Loki might not be the same as the one that's in this movie. Even though there was a clear implication at the end of season one that that variant of Kang was also evil, I yeah. would venture to say it will be a different version. Yeah. We also know very clearly, because Kevin Feige has said it, there are other more virtuous, heroic versions of Kang that are out there who we're going to encounter. So Majors has a unique challenge in that like, he can't really go five for eight. Right, he's got to kind of go eight for eight, like or seven for seven, whatever the number is. Yeah, we can't walk out of any one of his variant interpretations and kind of be like, ah, that's it, Jonathan Majors out of tricks, like nothing yeah, left yeah, in the yeah. bag. Like, yeah. he's got to keep reinventing. Obviously, um, Oscar Isaac played just two or three, two characters, but with Jonathan Majors <clears throat> and this character of Kang, I mean, they set it up with Loki in terms of. An, an infinite amount of kings, m multiple variants. This is going to be many different types of performances. How many we don't know certainly is going to be more than two or three. I would I would assume, Brian. So it'll be very interesting. I'm very interesting, Brian. I, I'm telling you, the end of this film will be key in terms of carrying the momentum towards the next thing. Now it's interesting, Loveness. Loveness had a couple of things that maybe people didn't realize as he started to talk about this film. So he was very open about saying that Avengers Endgame forced some alteration to the comics accurate Kang in the sense that, as he said, um, Endgame's use of time travel. So he's admitting to you that some of the choices Marvel already made in Endgame changed probably how he would have written this version of the character and how his motivations and sort of his um, some of maybe his more his evil tendencies. So I'm interested to see what that looks like. I saw in another interview where he also talked about Kang's humanity, which seems sort of like an odd choice, but he brought that up as like a quality he thought would differentiate Kang from Thanos, who was more alien in his approach and mindset. So who knows how these will translate to the Screen, but it gives you a little clue of like they're looking at comics Kang and then trying to say like how can we how can we not do what has already been done before with regard to time and with regard to villainy very interesting um, not dilemma but very interesting course they're taking with uh Kang. It'll be interesting, Brian, because obviously with Thanos, he was a different uh, sort of character in the comics, and they actually made him even better. Right? Um, and the hope is that they do the same with Kang, right? So, we'll I see. Said, I think the best, yeah, and I think the best thing, like I've said, is I think one thing Marvel is doing right, even though it is putting a lot on Major's shoulders is I, I like the fact that we're going to spend real time with Kang building up to Secret Wars. I mean, if there is one regret I have about the Josh Brolin Thanos, it's that he did it so well in Infinity War, it kind of left me 
wanting, like almost wishing we could have gotten a little more Thanos centric storytelling mm -hmm. before we had to cut. Because Endgame is not really about him. You know, he's kind of. Uh, Infinity War is his movie. It's the original, yeah, it's the original Avengers film. And as it should be, that's not a bad creative choice, but it yeah. just meant that Thanos and the essence of that character was really limited to one film only, yeah. and that was Infinity War. And so Kang gets that opportunity that Thanos never did, which is he's going to get a minimum, minimum three films. And he's also going to get minimum two TV shows and probably something else yeah. besides. Like I still think Fantastic Four, he he might pop up in that in some capacity. So I, I just think that lends itself to a much deeper exploration of the character than was possible in, in Infinity War. So that's a, that's exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. Now, I got to throw something else in here, though. Okay. So as we said, Loveness is writing Kang Dynasty. So everything you see in this movie, you also have to think in the back of your head, like, all right, look, this, this writer is thinking ahead. And this goes to your A-list thing. And this goes to a discussion you and I have been having along the way, which Marvel has a problem. To your point, Thanos on an ex exponential level, infinite Thanos. Our current crop of Avengers has less than no chance against that kind of opposition. None. At least no believable scenario we would think that group of heroes would win. Absolutely I think Lovis Lovis's challenge as much as anything is he's got to make us believe that it's possible that the heroes can actually stop this guy without dumbing down the villain to where it's like, oh, he's not such a great villain after all. He can't be Mayor Humdinger. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he just can't. And that's what we fear with villains, right? Um, I don't think we're gonna get that with this, but the, you got, I mean, it's sort of something that you sort of have to practice in, in not overhyping something. And it's just a scary uh, feeling when going into a film like this and hearing these these thoughts and, and and these descriptions and these adjectives being thrown at this character you can't help but be excited but a little nervous that it doesn't meet that expectation so so and it's one thing i think to endgame's credit to the very end they made thanos incredibly tough to beat I, I love that about the final hour of that like not just the final hour even though he's kind of a spectator He's very smart. He figures out their plan along the way and then comes up with a way to infiltrate and stop it. And then in his in the combat, he's never really defeated. He's tricked effectively by Tony Stark in the end. That's the only reason he loses. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really wise decision because there had we had he had he just been overpowered by one or two Avengers, you kind of would have been like, well, he's not that strong after all, but you're, you're left with the impression of, no, he really was the strongest combatant on the field. The Avengers as a team were just a wee bit smarter in the moment to pull off the impossible. Yeah. And so Kang, infinite Thanos, infinite Kang, this is where I go back to, I don't see a real physical way for Kang to be defeated, given his knowledge, and especially if he obtains the he, he obtains the crystal, which means to me, like whether it's Reed or whether you have to believe there's somebody on the heroic side who's smart enough to actually be a step ahead of somebody who knows all the outcomes. I'm sure you've heard that Adam Driver um, has been is rumored to be possibly looking to get this role. Brian, that's, if, I think he can do it. I think he can do it. Uh, and if he's written in a way, Brian, that is believable that this guy can outsmart Kang, then, then I'm all for it, but it's going to be hard. It's going to yeah. be hard. Which... Which goes to a point that I started kicking around and I kind of texted it to you earlier, which is when you look at the landscape of the heroes and we, we've talked in the past about, you know, the, the obviously the, the surprise absence of Chadwick Boseman, that's not something you, you would count on or, or, you know, ever plan for. But I, 
I don't know exactly what the grand plan for the Eternals was or is. But I kind of feel like the failure of that movie is looming larger as we go forward. In the sense that I feel like if there were a couple of those characters that you were uber excited to see again, I wonder if we'd feel a little differently about the lineup than we do. Because to your point, there's nobody like... Don't tell me that Bruce Banner is going to be the one to outsmart Kang. That ain't happening. You know, like, I mean, Carol Danvers is a more of a physical hero. That's not really like a, a tactician. Shang-Chi's yeah. not ready for that. Doctor Strange, okay, but I I don't I, I'm not buying him yet as like the ma- like and in some ways he already masterminded Endgame, you could argue, <laughs> with his choice to save Tony Stark. So I feel like that you'd be running it back if you made him the source of the solution yeah now you the x factor is and i have to i was thinking about the lineup i always forget that he's in the lineup because he wasn't in the lineup before but loki's probably an avenger this go around no don't you think he's this version of loki's a hero don't you think he's going to cross paths with the team and that's going to be an awkward thing but he's ultimately going to be on the side of good and and it's a lot more believable that Loki could actually hold his own in a game of wits with Kang than, than Ant-Man, I think. So I, I just throw that out there. Loki is probably in the hero's lineup, even though it's not been confirmed yet. And I never think of him as that because that's not what he was. I think we have to really see what Loki season two turns out to be. That'll be a telling sign yeah. as to where that ends up. But I would assume, yes, Brian, that if we do make it the Secret Wars, uh, that he'll be, play a part, small part, uh, perhaps a huge part. I don't. We don't know. I I think he'll be in it. But I guess my, I guess my point stands is that like okay, like we have Loki, but like if you were super excited to see the Eternals again, then like Fastos's engineering genius would be in the equipment. So there's these little elements that would really help if you're trying to map out a battle against Kang, but you have these characters that kind of failed yeah. along the way to where like, you're like, can you, I don't think you can build story around the Eternals right now. Cause there's no proof that people really are rallying around seeing them on the big screen. Did Eternal start the, the, the downfall of the second, uh, uh, the, I mean, I guess, uh, life after face, phase three right well i think that's the biggest i think of the misses we've had i think that's the one that surprised marvel the most like i think in a weird way like thor love and thunder it's a miss but like you could kind of see it coming like you, you could kind of know you kind of knew what the risks were but eternals bombed mm-hmm. like don't tell me there's anyone out there who has like a mega appetite to see these characters back on screen anytime soon, let alone have them be the linchpin to yeah. some sort of, you know, multiversal defense against Kang. So I, I, I don't know. I think it's a pro- I think it's a real problem. Like, I think it's one of those things that like if, if that if that team had hit, you had a whole new group of characters on the board you could have pulled from. And I didn't think that it was that bad. So, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of. Uh... This uh, this Kang role or villain being top tier, being in the same, being spoken of in the same breath as Thanos. You know, Thanos to us is like we, yeah, Brian, you said it. We wish we could have seen more. I wish we could have seen more. Um, but uh, now we have Kang. And it's not like we're not excited for it, but there's just a lot of... Uh, it's, it's great that they're talking the way they're talking about Kang, but it's just... If it doesn't live up to that hype, it's going to be very... Brian, if this doesn't work, Brian, I'm not saying it's over, but we'll talk about it later <laughs> yeah but i would say also people if you're commenting on it what do you want to see what do you want to see from quantum media that will get you super excited for where we're headed in kang dynasty and secret wars let us know 
in the comment section below. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Ooh.